Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Adi just read for you. I share with you today at verse 19. Jesus says, by your endurance, you will gain eternal life. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Do you like disaster movies? The movie Independence Day made more money than any other disaster movie. The movie was about a worldwide alien invasion. Now, there was a lot of destruction in the movie, but in the end, the good guys saved the day. The writer Wheeler Dixon, in his book, Disaster in Memory, says this, people go to disaster movies to prove that no matter how terrible the disaster might be, somehow they are still immortal. Well, that's a great description of the Word of God before us here this morning. People may go through the most terrible disaster in their lives on this earth, but somehow they are immortal. Jesus here is talking about all the terrible disasters that are going to happen before the end of the world. He's telling his disciples about all these terrible things that are going to happen. But then, Jesus says, in the end, through our trust in Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection from the dead, we will have immortality in heaven. Now, the word of God before us today takes place in the great temple in the city of Jerusalem. The disciples are with Jesus. They're standing there in this beautiful temple. I mean, it is majestic. The uh, temple stood on 36 acres of land. The huge stones that made up this temple were made of dazzling marble, white marble. And some of those white marble stones were coated with gold. I mean, it was like looking at a dazzling jewel. It was the greatest building, the most impressive building in Jesus' day. But then Jesus says here that the day is coming when this beautiful temple is going to be destroyed. Now, we know that happened in, in 70 AD. It came, it came true. But then Jesus says here that false prophets are going to lead many people to not believe the truth about Jesus. And Jesus continues and says there's going to be wars and famine and earthquakes and pestilence. But then Jesus says before all this happened, there will be people who will arrest you. They'll put you into prison. And some of you may even be killed. But then Jesus ends by saying they still had reason for hope. Wow. How could they have hope with all this going on? Well, that's what Jesus teaches us here in his word today. First of all, Jesus teaches us that with hope, all things are possible. If we think about a future that has no hope, well, then we get fearful. We get angry, we get anxious, don't we? But if there is no love and no peace and no joy, it is hopeless, isn't it? But Jesus says here, we can have hope for the future. Jeffrey Immelt became the CEO of General Electric on September the 10th, 2001. The next day, September the 11th, was when the terrorists attacked the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, causing our nation to reel into a financial meltdown. Now, the World Trade Center towers were insured by a subsidiary of General Electric named GE Capital. Well, 
Jeffrey's company here experienced tremendous losses, tremendous financial losses over the next few months. It couldn't have been a worse time for Jeffrey to have been taking over as CEO. But during this difficult time, Jeffrey says he learned how to respond to crisis and fear. Jeffrey said, I learned that things can always get worse, but I had hope for the future, and I never gave up on that hope. Well, that's what Jesus was teaching his disciples here today, and that's what Jesus is teaching you and me here as well. Things can always get worse on this earth, but there's hope for the future, and we should never give up on that. Jesus says here today, do not be afraid. Make up your mind not to worry about how you're going to defend yourselves. I will give you wisdom, says Jesus, that none of your enemies can resist. You'll be betrayed by parents and brothers and sisters and relatives and friends, and some of them may even put you to death. It seems like everyone's going to hate you because of me, but you will not perish. Jesus says, stand firm, and you will win eternal life. Those are great words of hope for you and me right here today. Make up your mind ahead of time how you're going to respond when troubles come into your life. Stand firm in your faith in Jesus, and Jesus promises you will have eternal life in heaven. With that kind of hope, all things are possible, aren't they? Secondly, Jesus teaches us today that hope allows us to see a bright future. Jesus spoke a lot about heaven while he was here on this earth. That's because Jesus wanted his disciples and us to know that there's a bright future ahead of us. Through our trust in Jesus, we have a bright future with Jesus forever in heaven. A mother had a five-year-old son named Clark who was just starting kindergarten. Now, Clark was really nervous. He was really anxious about going to his first day of school. And his mother tried to encourage him. She said, think about encouraging things when you get nervous. Say to yourself, I am brave. Say to yourself, I am loved. And you'll be able to get through the day just fine. Well. Later, one day on the way, his mother was taking him to school. She was driving him there in her car. Mother told Clark that she was really nervous about a, a big meeting she had at work that day. And Clark said, Mommy, don't be afraid. Be brave. Tell yourself that you're loved, and you'll do just fine at your meeting. What great words. Little Clark here gave to his mother. Jesus gives to you and me that same kind of advice today. When we get worried and nervous about the future, Jesus says, be brave. Remember that you're loved by Jesus. You have a bright future ahead of you with Jesus forever in heaven. Thirdly today, Jesus teaches us that hope allows us to view our troubles as opportunities to be a witness for Jesus. A faith that is trusted is a faith that's also tested. Think about that. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. Troubles in our lives are a test to see what we're really made of. These troubles, they'll test our faith. They'll lead us to put our faith into action. Now, if our faith in Jesus doesn't give us any hope, then people around us are going to question if Jesus is really important to us at all. In the country of Yemen, it's a crime to convert from Islam to another religion. A man named Ibrahim became a believer in Jesus. But for four years, he kept his trust in Jesus a secret. He didn't tell everyone out of fear of being punished. But one day, Ibrahim says to himself, 
I'm tired of being afraid. If I believe in Jesus, I should not be afraid. So I'm going to tell people about Jesus, even if they hurt me. Ibram did tell people about Jesus. Now, his family abandoned him. His wife divorced him. But still today, Ibram tells people about Jesus and about heaven. He looks at his troubles as opportunities to be a witness for Jesus. Pastor was talking with one of the members of his church who was dying. The man said, Pastor, for 87 years, I have always celebrated the many promises of God to me. But this morning when I woke up, I forgot those promises. Pastor said to him, even though you may have forgotten some of the many promises of God, do you think God has ever forgotten them? No, never. God is always going to be faithful to you. In our times of fear and worry on this earth, it's easy for us to forget those great promises of God too, isn't it? When our faith is tested, though, when we see bad things happening all around us in this world, when we see the violence and the hatred in our world today, when we see many people around us being hurt, it's easy to respond with fear and worry about the future. But God never forgets us. Always remember that. God never forgets us. So don't wait for troubles to come before you know how you're going to respond to them. Make up your mind. Make your mind up today that you're going to trust Jesus with your future. Because with hope in Jesus, all things are possible. Hope in Jesus will allow you to see a great future. Hope in Jesus will allow you to see the troubles that come your way as opportunities for you to be a witness for Jesus. And as Jesus said to his disciples here years ago, you will win eternal life in heaven. God bless all of us with hope in the many times of trouble that we continue to go through while we're here on this earth. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next hymn of praise.